Hey everyone, welcome back to Dustfinger's DMing Guide, where we go over different tools and processes that may be helpful in your DMing journey. Today, we're going to be focusing on the dice rolling feature of Obsidian Notes in the context of generating NPCs and even encounters. Before we begin, let's go over the plugins and plugin settings we're going to be using for this tutorial. We're going to jump into the left, bottom left hand side here, type in community plugins, turn off safe mode, click on browse, and install the following two plugins. Dice Roller by Jeremy Valentine, and Advanced Tables by Tony Grossinger. Dice Roller is the primary focus of this tutorial, but Advanced Tables will be useful as we'll see later. Now, we can go back into our settings and we can click on Dice Roller. Here, these are the settings that I'm using. I'll slowly scroll through them so you can copy them if you'd like. But for me, the most important change is to turn off the lookup display lookup table roll setting. This prevents a pretty ugly output from Dice Roller when you're doing generative rolling. The second setting we're going to use is uh, the advanced tables. We're going to leave these exactly like they are. You can change these if you'd like, but I'm leaving them as they come. Now, let's get into the main part of this tutorial, dice rolling. So we're going to hit Control E to jump back and forth between reading and source mode. If you, this says live preview, you're going to want to click down here in source mode and change it from live preview to source mode. This will make it just much easier to debug your dice rolling settings. First off, we have our very, very basic rolling. Let's say you want to roll a d20. Well, you're going to type in backtick, dice, colon, 1d20, and then a closing backtick. Then you hit Control E, and you can now see that we've randomly rolled something. Click again. We can click either on the number itself or on the little dice button. Having that dice button there is useful later on when we get into linking. So here we can see we're rolling 1d20. To use a more advanced form of dice rolling, we can type in multiple dice and even operations. So in this case, I have 1d12 plus 1d10 plus 5 times 2. And when we roll this, we can see that that's exactly what's happening. We're having 5 times 2 is 10, plus 6 plus 7 is 23. It does respect order of operations. We can also set the faces of the dice we'd like to use. So let's say we only want to roll between 3 and 5. In this case, we put a bracket around the 3, 5. And now when we roll it, with control E jumping back and forth, we can see three and five roll and four as well. Sometimes clicking this, you won't see a change because the dice has rolled the same number. Finally, we have our percentage die, 1D100 basically. And that's just done with that percentage mark there. Again, that's 1D and then the percent sign. Now, getting a little bit more advanced, we can do things like dropping the lowest or keeping the highest. This is really good for all you out there who use this, who might want to use this to generate character statistics. So, here, what is going on? Well, we're rolling 4d6 and we're keeping 3, the highest 3. That's what the K3 annotation means. Right here, 4d6, K3. And when it rolls, you can see 3, 6, and 5 add up to be 14, and the 1 is dropped. This is very standard for if you're rolling for new PC stats for D&D 5th edition. We can also choose just to keep the lowest. In this case, you can see the 3, the 4, and the 3 were dropped, and the 2 was kept. I don't personally have a use for this, but it very well may be of use at your table. Now, getting into the heart of this tutorial, linked lookup tables, the coolest feature of the dice roller. So first off, what is it doing? Here you can see I'm saying dice lookup table, and then this little weapon annotation. Well, that's a reference, and it uses those double brackets just like we do in Obsidian Links. So if we jump into our lookup table, we can actually see that down here, we have this weapons table. And it says dice, 1d2, weapon, and then the type of weapon. Then we have this annotation with a caret that indicates the name of this. The reason this is important is for when you do these linkings. So let's say we wanted to add something different and say relationships. Well, let's go ahead and make that. Dice, lookup tables, caret, relationships. Now, when we close this out, we can see that friends was rolled. If we click a few times, we'll get enemies. This is because, jumping back into the source view here, relationship is tagged here. These tables are made super easy by the usage of that advanced plugin table. That's why I told you to download it, and you'll see why. Normally, markdown tables are a bit of a pain to make. You can see the format they take, and they are really cumbersome if you're trying to get all these correctly justified. With advanced tables, you can do something as simple as this. Here, I'm just adding in the first pipe. Now, we're doing 1D... 3, 
This does have to be proper dice notation for the dice roll to work, and it has to match the number of dice that are listed in the table. We're going to call this armor. I don't think I have that one yet. And then I'm just going to close it and hit enter and look at that nicely formatted for me. Let's make these now. I hit one and then I hit tab and it automatically moves me over almost like you're in Excel. Not exactly, but close enough in this case. We're going to say leather, then hit enter, brand new line, and it auto justifies. Two, cloth for all our squishies. And three, plate for those paladins. And I think clerics. Now, if you're here, instead of hitting enter, you can hit shift enter. It'll bring you to the next line without adding to the table. We're going to add our annotation and say armor. Jump back into our link table lookup. Dice. Double bracket. And again, this gets auto filled with me, auto filled for me, which is really nice. Type in armor. And there we go. Just like that. We have a new linked list. Cloth, plate, leather. Perfect. Three rolls, three different outcomes. So how is this useful for NPC generation? I'm sure you can already kind of see the ideas forming. I use it for my random NPC template. I'm still building this out and learning as I go. So later videos may expand on it, or I might have templates for you to use. So here we are in random NPC template. We're going to jump into the source view here, make sure that we're in source, not live preview. And we're going to look up at the lookups I have here. Here for hair, I have a lookup table for length and a color. And I just type the word hair afterwards. Similar for eyes, an adjective and a color. Face is just adjective, unique descriptor. You can see I've made a few of those, very simple ones. Uh, these might not actually make any sense. This was mainly for demo purposes. And then we can do something really cool down here. And this, this I only recently discovered, and I'm excited to share it with you. We can say, we can create a relationship by doing this. Is dice lookup tables, uh, and we're going to do the relationship lookup. And then we're going to say in a relate this type of relationship with a person with a person tag. So in this case, we have a few different people with people tags. Rita is a person tag. Ihar is a person tag. Yax is a person tag. So now we automatically create relationships. This is really useful for creating these mappings and this web of relationships between your characters at random. So that pretty much sums it up for the dice roller templates. Again, check out the documentation, drop any questions you have in the comments. And if you liked what you saw, please drop a subscription. It really helps the channel and helps us grow and lets us know what you like. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one.